Before we get into today's video, if you guys are interested in entering our Angela Starter Kit giveaway, go ahead and check out our last video here. What's going on guys? This is a video topic slash series that we've been thinking about doing for a long time. We've just been trying to come up with the perfect way on how to go about it. So the main reason why I've been debating on doing this series or not is because amongst the shoe customizing industry, it can be very cutthroat and there's kind of a lot of uh, jabs and stuff taking over social media at other artists and you know anytime you do something similar to another guy you lack originality and you know you're not doing your own thing you're not staying in your own lane however as a shoe customizer you're going to get sent pictures of other people's work and asked by customers if you can do it and it's your job in my opinion to say that you can add your own spin on it similar to a tattoo artist you kind of need to be able to take on anything that walks through the door and add your own spin on it but a lot of the artists that we may feature within this series have a very unique style that we think should be talked about, featured, and learned from. And at the end of the day, you can't really necessarily do something just like them because it's their own style, it's, it's their way of going about it, but their style is cool enough in our opinion that we should talk about it and go into possibly a little bit of their process, their thinking process, and their execution process on how they go about it. Within other industries amongst YouTube, you will constantly see these same kind of searched about topics, how to edit like Brandon Waffle if you're into photography, or videography if you're into how to shoot B-roll like Peter McKinnon or something like that. Even within painting, not on shoes, but painting in general, you will find tons of videos on how to paint like Pablo Picasso and stuff. Each episode, we will be paying homage and respect to a fellow artist who we believe has a distinct enough style to go over that you guys can learn from. So for today's first episode, let's go ahead and dive into the artistry of Corey Bailey, aka Serato. When you look at a lot of his shoes, you can definitely tell they were done by Serato. One of the most common themes that I see amongst his designs is this colorful galaxy background and then a large character over it. If you've watched any of his many YouTube videos, he's done a ton of Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super shoes. Um, here's a pair he did for Clint Capella on the rockets that he wore. Super dope stuff. Um, I know he's done a ton of Vegeta Trunks videos and stuff. He's achieved over a million YouTube views with these videos. So he has this very dope, recognizable style. And so at the end of the day, the only person who can really pull off the Serato style is Serato in my opinion. But we're gonna go ahead and do our own Dragon Ball Super Custom. So let's go ahead and knock out these Kogis. So one of the first things that you'll notice if you've ever watched any of Serato's YouTube videos is he has a very unique workflow that I haven't really seen from any other customizers. The way that he does his designs like this is he'll lay down his character first rather than doing the background first. I am somebody who likes to do my background first which you'll see me doing here in this video but from what I've seen from his videos is he likes to print them out in the right size in a full color paper and then he'll actually build his stencil off of that. It's a really cool unique way so he builds his stencil off of this paper that he prints out to the right size who will cut the character out by hand and place that down and start building some line work around that. So since we're going to be talking about the background of this shoe, since I'm doing a trunk shoe, I wanted to go for an overall kind of dark grungy vibe, um, kind of placing trunks in a, in a battle scene was my goal here. So I laid down a olive green and I knew that I was going to build off a lot of earth tones along with that. So you'll see me laying down a few more earth tone stencils just to help create this overall grungy vibe that I'm going to place chunks on top of. Backgrounds are super important because to me they almost want to look like a wallpaper that you would see the character with or you know the perfect scenery that you would see the character on top of. After the background is complete I lay down my stencils and all I'm trying to do here is get the perfect silhouette of the character in which I can then build my color, my shading, and my line work on top of. So this is another area where you'll see I handle things a little bit backwards at least from the way that Serato goes about it. He has his line work done a little bit earlier in the project and then you'll see in his videos he goes back and touches it up at the end but I like to save all of my line work for last. Um, this is a really cool way for me because with the line work being last everything else is done. All of my color and shading is there so now placing this black line work down you'll start to see this character is really starting to come to life in my opinion and saving this for last really helps to that that you know all those hours of hard work are really starting to come together 
So um, obviously Serato is definitely the only one who can totally accomplish this Serato style that we've been talking about in this video, but as an artist you need to be versatile enough to tackle anything that comes through the door in my opinion. Something that comes to mind for me is a TV show called Ink Master. If anybody's familiar with it, it's a tattoo based design competition. And the person who typically wins the show isn't the artist who's the best at handling their own design. You need to be an artist who can handle anything that comes through the door. You need to be able to tackle a ton of different styles and designs. And you know, when somebody reaches out to you and wants a certain design done, you need to be able to say, I know that I can put my own spin on this and make it my own. And that should always be your goal with each and every project, in my opinion, that yes, I can do this design and yes, I can make it my own. So I know Serato's really well known and he does a phenomenal job at all of these Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super and anime customs. So with that coming to us, hopefully we were able to do it justice for him and our client and create a really cool Dragon Ball Super Trunks design of our own. All right, so we hope you guys liked today's video. We're very excited to hear your feedback on this new series, How to Customize Like, and we can't wait to hear what you guys think about it and what other artists you guys would like to see featured. Go ahead and uh, make sure you let us know down in the comments below what other artists you would like to see featured in the series, and we look forward to making some more of these. See you guys in the next one.